Okay, so a bit of off-farm video today and hopefully quite an interesting one. We are going to see a car, a car that Harry has drawn. So, long story short, Harry's at football. He's got football practice behind me. Can't film the kids, obviously. Uh, we're at the school where Jack goes to school. What I'm, we're going to do after, the, after he's had his practice, we're going to go and see a classic vintage car. Now, the story is we drove by it the other week. It was parked out on the road, and Harry went, ooh, that looks interesting. Love to see that. Well, the truth is, I actually knew the owner, and it's a friend of mine's dad, this chap called Ron, and I think he's got two cars. I think that one's an Austin 7. I'm not sure about the other one. We'll certainly find out in a minute. So we are going to go and see a vintage car. Harry's drawn it with a lovely colour. I don't think it's four-door, it might be two. Going to find out the story about this vintage car. And I thought it'd be really nice to look at this because, you know, it's really nice to speak to someone with a bit of knowledge about them. And not many people get up close and personal to something so old, you know, apart from someone old like me. Right, <laughs> let's go. When Harry gets here, we'll go and we'll see Ron and his classics. Brilliant. Harry's here, back from football. How was football practice, mate? Good. Are you ready to go and see the vintage car? Are you looking forward to it? Got the picture? Have you got any questions to ask about it? Um, does he know what year it was made? I think he might. Right, let's go. Let's go see Ron and his car. Just ignore me here, Ron, but I'm going to ask you a question. We, we are at Ron's house. Right. Harry's here. What have you got for Ron? Um, a picture. This oh, is a I picture like he made. Oh my goodness. Of right. your car. Yes, yes. We didn't, know, we didn't know exactly what year it was made. First question is, what, how old is it, Ron? Well, 90, let's see, 1934 makes it something like 80... 87 years old. Wow, that, 87 yeah. years old, Harry. That's older than my car. Right, <laughs> can't wait to see it, Rod. Yeah, Brilliant. Yes, there you are. They don't make them like that anymore. No. Well, you better hang on to that. And after you've seen it, you perhaps want to do another drawing. Yeah. Different. Cause Let's this go. One's, this one's got a, a hood on it. And that's not, that's why it's called a tourer. So you go out doing tours. Oh, look at this. Like these cars, this one's called Tommy Tourer. It's beautiful. Because when they've got a hood like this, that means it's a Tourer, see? And the other one here, this one, there's, there's his friend. You've got two. That one's, oh, yeah. got, that, one's, that one's got a name, it's called Benji. Benji. And the interesting thing about that one is it's a Thornbury car. Now, you're not going to guess when that one first came to Thornbury. No, when? 1937. Wow, so it's been here all that time. So it, no, it, uh, it lived in Thornbury all through the war. Yeah. One or two people have seen this car because it belonged to Bert Pullen. Right. And some people in Thornbury know Bert Pullen, who guess where he lived? He lived in Pullen's Green. Oh, right, right. right? We know the Pullen's so Green. Bert, Bert Pullen was the rent collector, all right? So he'd go around all the council houses in this car even though all the other cars were laid up because they needed petrol coupons. Oh, well, in the war. He, he'd got his petrol coupons. So that meant that Benji never got laid up during the war. Lots of cars, they were just up on blocks, you see, and never went anywhere. But that one kept going. Wow. And so in the end, it was his, he, Eddie Pullin had it, and that was his son. And Eddie Pullin got it in 1950. It was a wedding present. Wow. And Eddie had it, and he was a local electrician, so he worked for the council. Did he live in Titherington by any chance? And he lived at Titherington. I knew Eddie Pullin. Well, there you go. That was his car, was that it? That was Eddie Pullin's really? car. Really? And uh, he sold it to, um, uh, what was it called, Joe? I can't remember his name now. He lived to somebody in Siblings, and he had it for a while, and then the students had it. Oh. And the students went all over They're not the going to look after it, just, are they? They just about wrecked it. Yeah. And in the end, do you know what they did? They drove in. They drove into a lamppost. Oh! And when I bought that car, it had the shape of a lamppost in the front, like that. No way, really. And it, it was in a bad state, so I had to do lots of work on it to make it go again. So how long have you had it then? And I've had it since 1968. 1968. So that's 50 something. So maybe. you bought that one in 1968. Yeah. And that's an Austin Seven. What do you What do you say that one was? That's exactly the same. It's an Austin 7. But that's a hard top. And that's called a saloon. Right. And even, it's even because it's a bit box shaped, yeah. the popular name amongst the enthusiasts is that it's an Austin 7 
box saloon. Right. Know, that's the full title. Okay. And and they they were they're identical age. They both went on the road in March 1934. Moving on from this one, this is the saloon, wasn't it? This is the saloon, yeah. this is the one that we got first. And the, the, 1968. The, 1968, and round about that time, there were loads of them around that were being sold on exchange mark for about 10 or 15 really? pounds. But they were starting to just go up in price. Yeah. So this one, I had to find my last penny, and I gave 33 pounds for 33 this one. 33 quid? <laughs> 33 pounds. So I was born the year you bought this. Well, Believe it or not, 1968. <laughs> so, so you you weren't. So you drove. Did you drive this as a, a car to use every day, or did oh, you? Oh no, no, no. It was always a sort of no, classic. We we had an Austin Big Seven, which was built in 1930, 1938. Yeah. And that was the family car until 1966. Right. And then we decided we'd better have a modern one. A modern one. What was a modern car in 1960? Oh, well, the modern was a it was an A40 Farina. I'm yeah, not even right. sure what that is. I will look it up on the use, <laughs> on the internet and find out. Was it an A46? An A40 Farina. Never so, heard of one of those. Oh, there you are. And they were one of the first ones. What's that, that made had, by? Well, they, they were two-door on as conventional ones, except they were really a three-door because you could open up the back. And for the first time, you could put luggage in the back and communicate with the back seat as well. So we've got this one here. So you've had that one since 1968. Now we're coming on to this one now, ah. which is we can have a good look around because it's closer. So when did you buy this one then, Ron? Well, uh, 1996. 1996, oh, quite recent, but I quite think it's recent then. It, what's that? That's still <laughs> that's 20, that's right, 25 still 20, years 20 ago, years isn't it? Time and, goes on. By then, I mean, the other bit I should say is that we short, as soon as we got this one, we joined the Bristol Club, right. the Bristol and Seven Club. And lots of our friends in the Bristol Austin Centre Club had tourists. So they said, Wait, well, why haven't you got a tour then? Where do you want to get a tour? And it was very hard to find a tour because everybody was looking out for tours. Mm. And well, I can see the appeal because you, you take that down and then it's convertible and in the summer that must be right. lovely, isn't it? And, and as you see this one at the moment, yeah. the side screens that go in here, right. they're missing at the moment. So you can uh, take those out then, can you? Like a little... Yeah, oh, it's they, beautiful condition though, isn't it? Well, I mean... The, Let this, me, when I got it, it was in pretty good yeah. body condition, but mechanically it was not too good. So the first weekend I, I had to put my spare axle in. Okay, so, I mean, and, can I just ask you something? I mean, I, I, I'll be a bit rude. Can I ask how old you are? Me? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, how old I'm 82 now. 82. <laughs> so... It's interesting because I mean, when you were sort of young, these were these cars still on the road as being oh. everyday cars for people. Oh well, yeah. That, these were the students had all of these. Yeah, so the students because they were old cars and people would get them cheap and drive around them. Exchange them, yeah. you get one for ten quid. Right. No MOT. Get yeah. in it. Drive away. And you were allowed to do that. And you could drive around in those days with uh, with ball tires. Really. And and it was only when the the inner tube started showing through that they got a bit. So, because you grew up with that era, you kind of know about how these cars work in many ways. When I, I was suppose. a teenager, when I was just about when I was Harry age, I was there getting all these magazines, practical, practical motorists, and in there it would tell you how to take it apart. And uh, yeah. and then I worked on doing when I was a teenager, did things on my dad's car, and finally uh, I learned to drive in the old family car. But before yeah. I could put it on the road, I had to do a few things to it. So even before I uh, uh, left home, I was into we were pulling, pulling tinkering around apart. with cars. Yeah. So these were, I mean, it's amazing to think well, these, the car, these were on the, the road. The, the father's car was so bad that I went down to a scrapyard to get another engine, and stuck another engine, and that was when I was about... It's going to have a little walk round it. I mean, it's amazing to think that you were in the era when these cars were still being driven around, because I only oh, ever yeah, see them yeah, now yeah, as a, yeah, yeah. a collector's item. Yeah. What do you think, Harry? Because oh, I, I have... A lot of collectors' tractors, but none of them are as old as that. No. The closest one is probably <coughs> my David Brown. That's an old Harry's model. Yeah. Has model yeah, cars. Uh, sorry, tractors. Tractors. Yeah. Well, that's a lot. A lot of people like their old tractors. Do you get your wheels right on your drawing, Harry? You had um, wire wheels, didn't you? Oh, did you see? Spoke wheels. They're not really spoke wheels. wheels. No, he's got. He's okay. done the spoke wheels yeah, there. Then. Got both, oh no, we, we got a slight one. mistake, we thought it was a two door. No, and the wipers are fixed at the top. They are, aren't they? The wipers are at the top. That's unusual, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And well, it's so, it's lovely, isn't it? I think the reason that one of the reasons they have the wipers at the top 
is so that you can open the windscreen. Really? Oh yeah. And well, that comes all, undone. All Ooh. the ventilation that you Look want. Look at that. There you are. Wow. Well, I suppose. I think the weather must have been warmer in those days because if it was before to keep your feet cool, you open the little windows on, open those on the side. Oh, we got little, little. Look what's that? Oh my goodness! Yeah. So there's that little vent to let the That's so air in. Keep, keep your feet cool. That's love. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? <laughs> and when we've been driving, when we because we've we've been over to France with these several times, mm. and really hot weather, what we do going wrong really hot weather is to keep the roof on, and take all the side screens out. Yeah. And uh, have the vents open, and have the the, the windscreen open. So what sort of speed can will this do? I mean, you're not going to thrash it, are you? You're going well, we, to sort of 40 keep, miles we try, Well, we don't like seeing the big tube build up behind, so we no. give, give it a bit of welly. And given a bit of welly, might take it along at about 45 miles yeah. an hour. Wow. Like yeah, wow. <laughs> what do you think about that, Harry? <laughs> so you don't really want to drive on the motorway in a car like this, really, do you? Well, it's sort we of a no, country we, we lanes and stuff. We have done in the past. Yeah. Um, and, and it's getting a bit harder, and uh, there's more and more traffic on there. And you're in the slow lane, and you're not going as fast as the traffic in the slow lane. So I would have thought. I suppose the best thing is the joy. People are always glad to see you when you drive around in a car like this, aren't they? Well, they are, so long as they're not behind you. <laughs> all right. And it, it, the, the traffic, because you're looking in your mirror all the time. Yeah. Oh, look at the queue behind. And the worst thing that happens is that someone comes up behind who's not very good at overtaking, and you, you're slowing down. You see, right? There's a, there's a thing there. And if I was in the car behind. Well, I just drop the gear down, put my foot down, and it's getting past. But this car stays behind. So the next car behind, he's now got to overtake two cars. And he doesn't mm. mind. So, and the, the bloke behind that is getting a bit fidgety. And you see the one peeping out, so you think, we'd better find a lay-by. And pull in. in. And then all the traffic goes by, and uh, we go on again now. It's, oh, it's got a starting handle as well. Oh, it's got a starting I mean, handle. Yeah. Would, were they all traditionally well, started they, with a starting have, handle? My A43 had a starting handle. Because you don't see that very often. Vintage tractors had starting handles as well. Yeah. Now, no. was that a way to start it? But did they? Was that always what they used to start it, or did they have electronic switch to start them when they originally were right. made? Well, there you are. Bit of history now. The yeah. first Austin Sems that came out didn't have a starter. They right. Had to, you had to crank it by hand. So you had to turn that over. And wow. then something happened that made a lot of men very, very cross. They invented an electric starter. And once you got an electric starter, guess what happened? The ladies wanted to drive it. Oh. And so long as it ladies was, didn't so, drive in the so old days. So long as it was doing this, the ladies didn't want to do that. No. Because, it, it, you know, they'd bend, break their fingernails and things like this. that. Yeah. So they got electric starters. Wow. And the first Austin 7s didn't have any starters, but soon after that, they had an electric starter. Okay. So can we see it going in a bit, Ron? We can see it going. Well, do, I think we ought to go for a little ride. Well, can we go for a little ride, Harry? Would you like to go for a little smile there? Do you there? want to go for a little ride? Do you want a little ride, Harry? Right. All right. And so I, don't forget, it's a four-seater. Shall look. I go in the back? Yeah. Where, back where do you front. want to go, Harry? You want to go in the back? I'll go in the front if you go in the back yeah, then, Harry. It. Is you all right with that? Yeah, pop it in. Wow, wonderful. This is exciting. We're leaving, we're leaving the... Uh, Wow, look at this. Oh. I've just seen the people walking by and they're smiling. Perhaps, perhaps we, ought to keep, uh, we won't get too cold then, will we? People yeah. smile at a car like this, don't they? I'm smiling, it's just a lovely thing. <laughs> so we switch on. It's very compact, isn't it? There we are. We pulled the choke out a bit. Oh, the... this is that engine. It's a little bit spluttery at the moment. Yeah. Can you right in the back there, Harry? He's still there, is he? Yeah, he's still there. He's got the seat to himself. Wow, look at this. <laughs> he's gone quiet. Ah. Uh, no, I, just, I think I just put to get me. Okay. Get oh, shut the garage door. Okay. Oh, wow. How easy is the gear to change? Has he got a clutch? Yeah, it's got a good, but he's got a double, double clutch or something, isn't it? Well, I got the mesh on top. And, oh, that's uh, what I was thinking of. Not but see, when yeah. you come down here, like, you, you drop it in second. Then. So, you yeah. get that, so that was a little double clutch. It's quite a happen. skill to change the gear, then, isn't well, it? Well, you just got to be a bit patient, really. Yeah. And going up through the gears. Right. So, up in the third, yeah. yeah. So 
So what we got mileage, is that original mileage on there? Oh, I don't know. No, it's been round the clock a few times, I expect. Someone did a big overhaul on it yeah. back about 1970. No, a bit later, no, 85. Yeah. And he put the speedo back to zero. Oh, really? So That's it's insane. done 15,000 uh, since then. What what's, the, what's the little dial under there? Oh, for? that's a speedometer. Is it? You are joking! Yes! Oh my goodness! That me. is a Magmo speedo! That's a speedo! I, look at that! I've never seen a speedo like that before! <laughs> wow! It's tiny as well, isn't it? You're going to miss that if you're not careful! Well, that's right. You don't, you don't take too much notice of it, Lewis. Oh, Austin was very keen on registering all these things on there. Yeah. He didn't want, didn't want Morris catching up on his no. pieces, so he did that. Are you are you alright? Can you do a little bit of filming for that? Just filming right on this. Turn around and cut my phone. Have you got more away? Yeah, somewhere like that. What? Hello, just here. Alright, how do I open the door? Oh. He's off. I'm just getting an exterior shot of Ron. That he's going to give us a. We'll have a look at it from the roadside. That bike might be driving faster than him. He might get overtaken by the bike. Oh, it's lovely. Here he comes back again. <laughs> Woo. Was all that okay? Brilliant, all aboard. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh. I'll get rid of this guy. Hand signals, have you got indicators on here? Or yeah, is it here? yeah, they shouldn't have. Were they fitted? Oh, it's really well, yeah, yeah, you want to see them. The Were they fitted with indicators yeah, originally? Yeah, they're, they're, where's the switch? I don't find it very often. I don't use it very often. Uh, Oh, we've got the, the smell of that sort of leathery smell and yeah. petrol. I can smell it. I've lost my switch. switch. You're right. I'll, I'll give you a demo later on. All right. Um, yeah, right there. I've got okay. the truck. Are we going back the way we came? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, we, we, we do you want to do the bit under the engine? We'll have a look when we get back, shall we? Okay, yeah. Nice. There we are. There's big traffic in. Oh, you got a little in. Well, well was that standard? No. That, that was fitted me. later, was it? Yeah, like you need to have indicators. <laughs> oh, you need indicators, really, don't you? Yeah, especially when you're going abroad and you're on the wrong side of the road and things. So originally, everyone just had to stick their hand out the window. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's why. And, and it was, it's only recently that it stopped being in the highway code. Right. Comparatively recently, and you had to know your signals and do them when you were taking your test. I just noticed on the uh, steering wheel it says gas. Oh yeah. And ignition. Is that ignition or that's the, that's the accelerator. That that over a gas. So, so that's the, the idea would be when you were starting the car up yeah. that you would retard it a little bit with the ignition and uh, and but you, you would put the, the, bring this one down and that would open the throttle right. slightly. The throttle, not but, the accelerator. But I notice they've used the word gas. That's American petrol, isn't it? Were they aiming for the American market? I think they were just wanted a short, a short oh, I word. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Although Austin and uh, Henry Ford were great pals and uh, worked together. The right. Austin went over to America and saw what they were doing there. It was only really after he caught up with uh, Henry Ford that he decided to make steel-bodied cars. Mm. Up to then, they'd all tended to be coach-built and made in the same style as coaches were made. You know, yeah. Wooden. Well, this was all. Rexies this is all. Be, this would all be handmade. This car, would it? Nothing. I'd be on an assembly line, but. Well, obviously, the, obviously, well, you can see a lot of it on this one because we've got to 1934. Yeah. There's all sorts of steel panels. Right. And how big the steel panels are depends how big your press chopper is. Yeah. And you can see seen from some of the photographs of the old works there, they're huge machines mm. that come down and sump the metal into shape. Uh, what should we do here? Uh, lots of the catch on there. Pull 
need to stick it on the drive, we can look at the engine. Yeah, I think I better open the back. Whatever you think's right, Ron. I'm going to reverse onto the truck. Okay. Right. Yeah, if all the doors open, that's handy, isn't it? Yeah. That could do one of those. It's quite a nippy little car, isn't it? Yeah. You know? It's quite manoeuvrable, isn't it? Yeah, well, you so, are you a member of a club? Oh, we've been members of the Bristol. Yeah. Oh, what was that? That must be the club. You member of what? An member of the Bristol, Bristol Club since yeah. uh, 1968. So, if you could just leave it there, I'll take some photographs of it, I think, before. That sounds like the exhaust pipe caught there. Just caught on the edge. There we go. All right. Have a look at that in the sunlight. It is so lovely to look at. It is so lovely. Right, Ron, so you, we're going to have a look at the engine. Now, the engine is probably going to be tiny. That is quite small, isn't it? And that's, uh, there's the petrol coming in. And there's the petrol pump. Oh, yeah, that's just like uh, on a tractor. We have a diesel lift pump. pump. And um, if you see then that line there, that's the line of the camshaft. Right. And the camshaft uh, will work the pump uh, there. And then... Over the other, below that, obviously below there, is the crankshaft. Mm. And the crankshaft is um, geared through there onto I, the camshaft. I just noticed your horn. That's <laughs> quite oh, big, yeah. isn't it? Hey, nip round there and press the press the horn button. Is right? that the one on the... Um, right in the middle there. Reach across and give it a poke, the silver on, bit in the middle. On no, the, and the, in the steering wheel. In the middle wheel. of the steering wheel, Harry, the button. <laughs> oh! <laughs> So it makes people jump that. Sometimes. Two more questions for you. Yeah. I don't know if Harry's got any. Um, firstly, what size engine have you got in there? 750cc. 750cc. Uh, three quarters of a litre. Wow, <laughs> wow. And uh, the second question I was just thinking off the top of my head, is this an original Austin colour? Oh. Or is it a colour that's been... Because obviously over the lifespan of the car, it's probably had a respray or two. Oh, yeah. Is yeah, that an original... This, 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 re this one was resprayed only yeah. about uh, 10 years ago. Um, and it, it, I think it originally was that sort of colour. Maybe a slightly different, uh, slightly darker. Right, okay. More maroon side. Because I noticed they're both the same colour. I think a lot of them, but the other one was all black, and most cars yeah. were, were black. I was going to say, I told Harry this. I said, yeah. did you know this story? You can have it in any colour you like it's as long as black. it's black. Right. And he didn't quite understand that, did you, Harry? It doesn't make sense. Well, it was because he basically... It, it made the, it cheaper. Yeah, was that what it was? The black well, was the cheapest yeah, colour? Yeah, cheap, cheaper. Because they were... And that was Henry Ford said, mm. and he can accept black. Because he wanted to make everything as cheap as he could, yeah. so that he could... So that everyone could have a car. Yeah. Yeah. Harry, have you got any questions? Um, You've done a do pretty you, good... What do you want to think, what are you going to ask about the plugs? Where do you think the plugs are? Do you know what those plugs are? Mm. Do you know what they're for? Oh. Do you well, know how this works? You well, see we those plugs? We've got, we got to see how it works then. Yes. See, petrol comes in through here, pumps and comes in through there. And when it gets inside there, just just beneath my finger, it's into a tube, and there's a tube running in that way, and air is going in that way, and petrol's coming in that way, and the petrol turns into a spray, and when you spray petrol and air to put them together, they're ready for a bang. So as soon as they get inside there, and the mixture, having gone in there, goes through there, and feeds that one and that one, and that one goes through the pet, this vapor goes in through there, feeds that one and that one. So, as soon as you've got this mixture in there that's ready to go bang, you give it a spark, and that's what happens. And underneath there is the piston, and bang, and down goes the piston, and they all take it in turn one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And this, on, having burnt the gas, it's got to come out, so it comes out through the exhaust all joins together and there's the exhaust running towards the back of the car so that's there it you go. So it goes tiny petrol, yeah it's petrol tiny and air in bang and what you're going to say if you want a car to go you say you've got to get it in you've got to burn it and you've got to get it out that's what it's all about that's make it that's all to do with making a motor car work mm. <laughs> It's a lovely little thing, and it? you've got the radiator right on the front. I mean, you sort of think that's quite vulnerable there, isn't it? Because most modern cars, ah. like, the radiator's hidden behind something. There's something got... else that's missing, Harry, that's on a modern car. 
And there is a water pump. There's no water pump. Right, no water pump. No water pump. So what does the water do? Just how's this work then? Well, this is it. You see, if you've got a, a water pump, it's very, water pumps don't like water being next to the bearings. So you've got to try and keep the water away from the bearings, and that's where a lot of thought goes on. And back in 1934, they weren't very good at that. So Austin said, I don't want any water getting near any bearings. I think I'll just have a big tall radiator and the hot water can go up and it'll cool oh, straight and it'll come right. down again. Okay. And that, if when, you, when you start doing physics at school, they'll talk about convection currents. And it's just a great big wow. convection current. I didn't realise that. But does, it, does that black pipe come out there? No, the black but it comes in the top, the it's, water comes in the top. That's a tank there. Yeah, it's basically a water tank. Yeah, I have a little... If you can, you Ooh, will that be hot in there? Well, not too bad. It's not on the pressure. <laughs> Doesn't, no. It, uh, Ooh. Is it a bit stiff? Well, it catches. It's, there you go. There you go, there's there the water, are. Harry. Can you see it in there? See the water in there, look. So that's that's a tank full of water. A tank full of water to cool the engine, take all the heat away from the engine. The, the, see the steam you, coming out. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, it's a little overflow pipe, yeah. there, see? And, the, and that's so it, doesn't, it never gets up to pressure. So you can see the end of the pipe there? Bit there. Right, come round the corner. And I'm trying to see it. That pipe runs all the way down and it comes out the bottom. So there's never any pressure in there. If you've got a modern car, a modern car's got a lot of pressure in there and that's, uh, that's bad news. It's, uh, if you take the top off it. It suddenly boils. It doesn't really have a floor underneath the engine as well. No, well it's very different from a modern car, isn't it? Look how tiny that is. There's the exhaust, look, it's tiny. tiny. Isn't it? Look at the size of the exhaust, it's, it's like a little stick. <laughs> it's tiny, yeah. isn't it? Well, this is it. people that want to go faster, they've got a bigger one. Yeah. And this one, she's got the petrol tank in the back. Oh, uh, petrol there tank's here. There. There, there's another sort. You see the slope there? When they first came out, these cars had a petrol tank that was here. When it reached, that was in the petrol tank, which is there, there, and there. And the bottom of the petrol tank had a slope on it, so you got the last bit of petrol out. It drained out. Well, uh, Ron, that has been brilliant. Thank you very much for giving us a guided tour of your. Oh, you're welcome. Has it got a name? Hey, you call... It's called Tommy. Tommy called Tommy, Tommy, is it? Tommy Tora. Tommy Tora. <laughs> Are you going to say thank you, Harry? Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. This is it. I think it's. Uh, it's good that uh, we can get a chance to give some, show some money. It's lovely to see these cars still being kept on the road, isn't it? Yeah, you know? Right. I don't know, I took a little bit of the bonnet. There you go, it's yeah, gone on. Oh, Brilliant. Yeah, they, How about that then, ladies and gents? We have seen a lovely classic car <laughs> with the lovely Ron. Um, Tell us what your first car was in the comments below. There we go. Cheers all. A Brucey bonus, we're just seeing the indicators. What have we got here? Look at that. It's like, oh. it, it's got a little glow. A little glow, so that's the, uh, so those are, are those original to the car? Yeah, yeah. So that's what it originally had? What that's that what they was. originally had. Wow. Yeah. It's like a little arm coming out, isn't it, Harry? <laughs> and it's got tiny ones under here as well. Yeah. What's that other thing extra he's put in there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll get back to my car now. It's not quite the same, is it? Thumbs down. Let's go home then. I'd rather go home in that instead of this. <laughs>